Okay, before we think in terms of the rich store of wisdom, salvation, and knowledge, I want you to just think about stability for a moment. I did this with my team last night. I said, we just went around the circle. I mean, we're, we're you. You're us. We all have problems. We all have great concerns. And this world is so unstable. I read something the other day that really, I feel like, in so many ways, gave evidence to the fact that sometimes we wonder, are we in worse shape or have we always been like this? Well, his thing was, oh, no, we're in pretty rough shape. And really, they, they blame a lot of it on social media, uh, of what it's done. They blame a lot of what our uh, middle school girls are going through. We're seeing self-harm in our middle school um, and high school girls at an outrageous an outrageous level, and what, what, what does it stem back to over and over again, this comparison, I'll never be enough, I hate myself, and, or people are telling me they hate me, all of these things. Moms, be courageous. Have some, some kind of boundaries there. Watch what your kid is storing. Your, your kid is a kid. They do not have the maturity. When they say to you, when they're 14 and say to you, you can trust me, Because they can't trust themselves. I couldn't. I couldn't. I needed somebody to come along and go, you know what? Little girl, you're out of control. You're out of control. I remember when uh, someone very close to me said, you'll be pregnant by the time you're 16. And I wanted so badly to say, then why don't you help me? Why don't you help me? I don't know what I'm doing. I came from a background of sexual abuse. I never was taught a single boundary. None. I did not get to have any boundaries over my person. Somebody help me. Who just judge me. Might someone out there just simply help me? No. We'll just talk about you. Jesus, Jesus. I want to talk a moment about stability because when I look back over the course of my life and my upbringing and, and the abuse and the things that I have been through, none of them was as relentless as instability. It was just constant. Was anybody else raised in a situation that you're not, you're not saying you weren't loved, you were, you were. You were also mistreated by others, and I mean, it's just a whole con conglomeration of things. But w could anybody besides me, of course, if your mother's sitting next to you, you're like. <laughs> and you're putting your hand up here and going. But was anybody else just raised in complete instability? And so I, I was asking, I, I, I talked this over with one of my coworkers, what, when we go, I just, could I just have a little stability? What is it we mean? There are so many things that would have meant to me. For one thing, just knowing, I never knew if we were going to be all right, any day, any day ever. I never knew if we were gonna be financially all right. I never knew if my parents were going to be all right. And listen, there were some lovely things in my home, some funny things in my home, some good things in my home. Stability did not happen to be one of them. And I'm, listen, and this is what will happen if you, single woman, do not get this worked out. I married straight into instability. And Keith would not mind me telling you that because we're not who we used to be. But we were, I'm telling you, we were two trains heading on this track straight toward one another, and we crashed together, crashed together. I mean, if you, don't, if you don't let God bring you some healing and let him get you some good, good, solid therapy, you will repeat the same pattern. You'll be so mad at your parents for putting you through that, and then you will do the same thing. Why? Because it is stored. It is stored. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We got some things so far in there. For instance, uh, my abuse. 
They were going like, how do we unstore that? I want to say something to you because I, I think this is very, very important. What do we do when something is so deeply stored we almost can't deal with it? I'm going to tell you this. That's where you seek out people who have been trained in trauma therapy and work with God through it. I cannot recommend enough that if you have something so deeply stored, for me, there were things that people would go, well, how do I know the difference? Well, if I can just deal with it through very um, intensive, uh, persevering um, prayer and seeking God through his word, and that he and I are working out, particularly if it's a sin issue, then he and I are just, I mean, if, if we can work it through, then, you know, that's what we're doing. If I am doing everything I know to do, and I still am so traumatized by it, I'm knowing then that God is giving me the freedom to be led of him to get some good, solid help. I'm a very big believer in good, solid health. I have lost a good bit of confidence in some of the things that we have provided in the church. Now, somebody here is going to say, uh, I'm a church counselor and I resent that. And I'm going to say, you may be the exception. And so God bless you. Keep up the good work. And if you're a licensed therapist with uh, good training and trauma and you work for your church, God bless you. We need more of you. But I am getting nervous about stories I've heard about being told to go right back under that roof and let him abuse you again. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. When I said last night, my heart, listen, gentlemen, thank, I'm so thankful that you're here, but my heart, God just called me to women's ministry. I think of you every day. You are what keeps me awake. I think continually, what is your well-being? I think continually about the yayas. I think continually about the little girls. How do we bring them up in this world that has so um, exploited them uh, for their looks and what they can give to this world sexually? What, what can we do to guard our girls and raise them up in the fullness of Christ where they know their own value. And so last night when I was reading the text, if you get hit on one cheek, offer the next, I'm not talking about domestic abuse. Keep in mind what the spirit of the text. He's saying when, when you're mistreated out there and you realize somebody's really been ugly to you and they've cursed you, bless them back. That keeps you empowered. But if you're getting knocked around... Get to safety. Get to safety and get some help and work out what you are to do from there in Jesus' name. Oh, just stability. What is stability? When he says, I'm your constant source of stability, what does he mean? Okay, he is the rock. We've been saying it's a rock on which we stand. He is the sure foundation. He is the cornerstone. In that same Luke 6, if we had kept reading, we would have gone right into the house that is built on the rock. This is supposed to be calling back, echoing back to Isaiah that talks about that sure foundation, that rock on which we stand. Now, I want you to get this picture with me. I was telling the team last night, we were, I stood up and I did it with them. Um, we are to put both our feet on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ. Both feet. Now, if I were sitting down, we think, well, both feet, I can do that sitting down. Oh, no, no, no. Because your full weight is on your hind end in that chair. What is that chair to you? Your bank account? All of that can go up in smoke. None of that is going with us. The Bible intentionally says over and over again, stand, stand, stand. And the thing about God is he's not into my left foot is on this. It's on my job, and we, we need jobs. My right foot is on the Lord. No, no, in all of my job, in all of my earning, 
and my health and well-being, in my heart and in my mind, my future, my constant source of stability is God alone. God alone. Now, I don't know what's going on with you, and I don't know if after you felt stable all this time, somebody close to you is really unstable right now. And like you're going, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how this is going to work out. Sometimes what can also happen is that somebody else's instability will trigger ours. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, okay, like for a while we'll be all judgmental, like they're so unstable. And then after a while we're going like, oh, now I'm unstable too. Because it's just like, it's just contagious in the home, isn't it? I mean, one unstable person, two unstable, three unstable, whole family, whole generation of unstable people. Other times it's us. I want to tell you something. I told this to my team last night. None of us. Us. Not one of us is so stable we cannot become unstable. I hand you Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. Talk about a dude that had it together. God literally touched his brain, and I mean, he was like down on his hands and knees, growing his fingernails out like this, eating the grass from the field. And the Lord had to bring him back around through his repentance because he thought he was God. I'm not saying the Lord's going to touch your mind and make you unstable. I'm saying this is a very unstable world and we're poorest people and it's getting inside of us. You've got to know who your source of stability is. So here's the thing. Here's the thing that you want stored. Because think about it. I kept thinking about those three words. And so um, in a lot of ways, you're going to have to take your own time with it so that you can work it out and you can picture it. I want you to think, what is it? That is wrapped up in salvation, which is a word that always also means deliverance, rescue, help, salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. What is it? If that's my rich store, if, if God is my rich store, he's my rich store, and that, that's what I have in storage that I can draw from at all times. At all, what does that do for me? Well, salvation obviously, not just salvation um, from, from uh, the, the devil and from our own flesh that we might live in eternity forever, but also we are ever being saved. We've been saved from our sins and had eternal life when we received Jesus. But I mean, he is just like saving us to the uttermost is what the book of Hebrews says in 725, that we're just constantly, like, he has saved, he will save. He's constantly delivering us either through something or from something or in something. Anybody? Wisdom and knowledge. Have you been trying to get some traction in your own walk with God? Have you been seeking new ways to study and tap into the power of Scripture? Living Proof Ministries has created a resource with you in mind. Practical Steps to Intimacy with God is a guided two-part teaching series by Beth Moore. In it, Beth shares her practical how-to steps from her personal time with the Lord. This resource contains an interactive journal to help you engage and experience God through His Word in a tangible way. Grab your copy today and connect the theology of God's Word into the reality of your life and let His Word speak over you. Visit BethMoore.org forward slash donate. I believe so strongly in the power and the limitless possibilities of a planned getaway with God. Not in spite of 25 years of doing it, but because of it. My co-laborers and I at Living Proof Ministries want to invite anyone and everyone to come join us at a Living Proof Live. We're going to do two things. We are going to worship God with everything in us, and we are going to study Scripture together. Especially for me as, as a mom, this is a different form of self-care to me. This is more of a form of soul care. This is a weekend for you and the Lord to meet. We know how transformative and incredible these weekends can be for someone's life and for their marriage, for their families. You're going to dive deep 
into the Word of God. You're going to have maps, you're going to have Greek words, you're going to have full context. That's what I love. It's going to point you back to Jesus Christ and His Word every single time. This space is for all of us. There's such beauty when all of His children come together and worship Him and engage with Him. You're going to be celebrated. You're going to be delighted in. I believe God is so good that if we will come attentively, He will not pass us by. It's time for us to show up as living proof of God's life-changing grace and love. Come and join us. Uh, knowing what verse I'm about to tell you, I've already got a lump in my throat because this, is, this has been the joy of my life. But in Colossians chapter 2, starting in verses 2 and going on into 3, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says this, In Christ, we have hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I know this is hard to understand before you've experienced part of it. But what the Apostle Paul told us in Philippians is this. He who had been to the tip of the mountain, he had known influence, power, importance. He had been highly esteemed. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was like Hebrew of Hebrews. He was just zealous to a point that we couldn't begin to understand. Then he'd also known what it was to be completely hated and abased. He had been to the absolute extremities. His eyes through a vision had been, um, had been uh, opened until to things that were in the third heaven, in the throne room of God, that he said, I can't, there's no words to describe to you what I saw. None. He'd experienced all of these things, and yet he said, there is one thing that is of surpassing value in all of life, and that is knowing Christ. I can't explain it to you. You have to experience it for yourself. And it truly, it just begins by going, I, I want to know you. I, I want to know you. Jesus, I, I want to know you to the point that you are the most real thing in my life. More so than anything I could touch or see with my eyes. I want to know you. I want to know the wisdom that resides in you. I want to know what you're like. I want to know what it means to be completely loved by you. I want to value what it means that you gave your life for me. That I might live with you forever. I want to know that. Remember that we were told in one of the translations that he is our rich store. The Lord is a rich store, all contents prepaid by the cross. And you don't need to take any money with you because it's all been prepaid. All the salvation and deliverance you need, all the help and the rescue that you need, all the wisdom that you need, Come without doubting, ask him for it. All the knowledge that would thrill your heart and enlighten your mind and, and enlighten your eyes. It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. I want to remind you of some words out of Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Jesus says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Oh, don't make it all about here. You're not taking any of this with you. Store up your treasures in heaven. And I realized, I don't know if I can explain this well. I kept moving my hands while I was trying to work this through with God, trying to act it out. I said, okay, Lord, if I understand, I'm going to look at my notes so that I can say it right. If I understand this exchange, here's what is happening. 
that when we store up treasures from heaven, and that's what's in this storage of the Lord. So I'm going to reach into that storehouse because I constantly need salvation, deliverance, rescue, help. I constantly need wisdom. I, I love growing in the knowledge that Jesus has for me. When, when I reach in there, I am taking treasures free of charge because they've been paid for. I am taking treasures into my storehouse. He says that when we take treasures from heaven into our storehouse, that what is stored is going to act. That when I then begin to act out of what is stored, and I will always act out of what is stored, but when I take treasures from the Lord and I store them in my heart and then I walk out of that and I become a benefit, a force for good in my sphere of influence. I become a person that, um, that loves people, even my enemies, that loves my neighbor. When I act these things out, when I speak these things out, then he lays them up in heaven as treasures for me. Does it ever occur to you that there's not one good thing that he himself didn't give us? And then he acts like, well, it's just my joy to reward you with this. Why? Reward yourself. You did it. No, I love you. I can't wait to reward you. Let me say that again because these are our truths. That we're told that we, we have a storeroom we're living at. Well, he's saying, I am your storeroom. So when you take from my storeroom of salvation and wisdom and knowledge, and you store it up in your storeroom, and then you act out of what is in that storeroom, I bless you by that act building up your treasures in heaven. I'll have every bit of that in your condo when you get there. That just messes with me. How good can he be? I got to tell you about my friend Janice Meyer. My friend Janice Meyer, she is a little bit younger than I am, but pretty much my contemporary. I've known her for many, many years. And she works, she advocates for the poor and uh, uh, primarily for them to have clean water and for them to have food. I'm talking about just like food, 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 food. One reason we want to give to the poor, I was listening to a um, a, a star, I'm talking about a star, it was, uh, Natalie, it was the podcast that you uh, sent me. And I was listening to her talk about her, her, the poverty of her childhood. She's like, she's an award-winning actress talking about the poverty of her childhood. And, and so the person interviewing her said, you know, what, what is it like to just be hungry all the time? She said, you can't think of anything else. I mean, there's no thinking, how do I live in victory? Because your stomach is empty. And so my friend is a photographer. She goes all over the world into places uh, where there is extreme poverty, extreme poverty. And she takes pictures so that people will know what is out there. She's a very, very trustworthy person. And uh, that's, that's how she works. She goes all over the world. You can't even believe what her passport looks like. But she told me yesterday, uh, we, we were texting back and forth, and she said, I'm in Rwanda. And she said, you know, Beth, I was here 28 years ago. And she said, at that time, uh, I held all of these orphans and saw all of these orphans whose parents had just been slaughtered. And she said, a lot of them are gone. But she said, I will meet a lot of the very ones that I held on this trip. That is building up treasures in heaven. That is determining I'm willing to do something hard where I have to really I have to depend on the Spirit to do it. But I'm laying up my treasures in heaven and not on earth where all of this can be destroyed. I want to show you something. Um, I've spoken, I've talked so much. After a while, I can feel the tenderness in my heart because then it begins to empty up and then I feel like crying. But uh, this is so precious to me. I told you, just so that you don't get any romantic notions about, well, if I was like her and I had a man that loved me like that, we've had so many problems, but we are so devoted to one another. Um, I've said before, we have fallen in and out of love at least 500 times. Um, 
but we just, you know, so much people say, how do you stay in love? I'm, well, I don't know. Ask somebody that's done that. <laughs> Was that inappropriate? <laughs> but I'll tell you this, that I, I choose to fall back in love with him. We're just so much stored. But he wrote this to me a long, long time ago. And his name is Ivan, because you're going to see Ivan on it. It's Ivan Keith, and I call him by his first name. And he calls me by my whole name. And he just gave it, he just wrote it on a card a long, long time ago. And it travels with me everywhere I go, every suitcase. Every time I travel, I take this with me. And it just says this, I love you. You're my treasure. You're my treasure. My girl said the other day, you know, <laughs> Travis knows him so well. He's such a handful. And when my girl said this about him, they didn't necessarily mean it positively. But neither one of the girls were home for his birthday here recently. And they said, Mother, he doesn't care. He's got you. <laughs> Jesus has given you this card today. I love you. You are my treasure. Living Proof Ministries would like to send you a thank you gift for your donation. Visit BethMoore.org forward slash donate. We hope this message encourages you to love and live God's word. Click subscribe so you won't miss any teaching. Thanks so much for watching.